the morning started out with say uh suzuki's injury news and the night ended with just another wild wild game i don't know how this episode's gonna go man you are locked on cubs your daily chicago cubs podcast part of the locked on podcast network your team every day you are Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans, taking our passion into a discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Locked On Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Today's episode is presented by Monopoly Go. We all have a competitive side, and you can showcase that with Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. Join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free in the Apple or Google Play Store. Well, the top story, I think, still is Seiya Suzuki uh, being out for an undetermined amount of time. We're going to get that going to lead off the show, but the Cubs with a thrilling 3-2 to two win on Monday night in Phoenix AZ, and we're going to break down that entire game as well uh, before we have a couple notes on Ken Holtzman, who passed on Monday. Sam, what a crazy day on Monday in Cubs land. I'm starting to, like, think this is like a like Ashton Kutcher is going to come out and, like, punk us or something. I mean, it's April 16th. We've lost our our ace pitcher, in my opinion, our best reliever, in my opinion, our best position player. Then last Monday had a catastrophic loss. Yesterday, a crazy win. And then tonight, everything just came off the rails. Uh, uh, Let's just start with Suzuki, and then we'll get to Monday night's game, which I don't even... You know, I think I'm just going to kind of concede on this. It's uh, just the exclamation points to describe the game. So, Seiya Suzuki suffered an oblique injury during Sunday's game in Seattle, even though few of us uh, knew that, although it sounds like some did, like Sam. Uh, the oblique injury is a right oblique strain, and Suzuki has been placed on the 10-day IL. It's the same injury he had in March 2023 that caused him to miss about six weeks, including the first week and a half of the regular season last year. Six weeks from now would be the last week of May. However, Saya did tell Marquee Sports Network Monday that he feels it's less severe than the first time around. But Sam, this is a big loss. It's your everyday number two hitter. It's your most well-rounded offensive threat. And it's another in line of what have been now three, four major absences. Yeah. Well, first of all, so when I was watching the game on Sunday, I was watching at my mom's and she picked it out. She goes, he didn't run all, he didn't, he didn't run all the way to first base. Did he get hurt? And I was like, yeah, it didn't look great, but then I didn't hear anything. And I forgot that he was DHing that day. I assumed since Mm -hmm. we didn't hear anything that many came back out to right field, but he was DHing. So the, the second I saw Canario getting called up, I knew he was hurt. My initial response to start a, a very challenging week uh, w- w- was was just I, I was thinking about him individually, um, not not the team, and just how right this is a guy that I think is the closest guy on our team to really hitting stardom, and and being a guy that could hit three hundred. Uh, for a season and being a guy that could flirt with 35, 40 home runs and his whole Cubs tenure right now, it feels like it's been summarized by certain flashes, great flashes, couple months of great flashes, but you know, it, it, it hasn't been able to be sustained. There's always that, but can he put it together? So when I saw him go down again with this and, and then seeing that it's an oblique, I thought maybe he pulled up, it would have been like a hammy or Hamstring, something. Yeah, it was, it was really tough and, and it stung. Um, you know, council didn't sound as optimistic, maybe as say I did. So we'll have to see going forward. Right. But um, individually, I think it's just I really feel for him and just his progression because I do think he is the Cubs' best player. Uh, I know Michael Bush is 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 that right now, but over the course of 162 this year, I just felt like he was going to break out, mm-hmm. and uh, it's things for him. As far as the team goes, 
you know, this is an injury the Cubs are suited to be able to absorb because they have so many outfielders. Right. But as, as we'll probably talk about a little bit in the second segment, some of these guys are going to have to start hitting the baseball. Uh, Ian Happ is in <laughs> a really – idea. Ian Happ's in a deep funk. I thought Bellinger had a couple better ABs today. I thought today was a step for thought today was a step forward for him, albeit a, a small step forward, but one at that. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I, I think like my, my thoughts right now are a bit skewed because of how emotional this game was. But but you know, earlier in the day, my I it was just like, you know, in a vacuum, I think they could they'll be fine with the Suzuki thing. In a right. vacuum they'll be fine with the steel thing. Heck, they're three and zero in the games now that he was supposed to start with Ben Brown coming in. We'll talk about him. Hmm. It just it just seems like April sixteenth a lot to be missing. In my opinion, your best starter, your best hitter, and, and and arguably your best reliever. It just was a lot, and and I had a, I had a hard day with it. Yeah, you did. You did have a hard day with it. It, it doesn't seem like it is. It is a lot. Yeah. Uh, you you just lose the the top of the depth chart dudes at at each of those three spots. SP, RP, and position player uh you know you're you're feeling it and uh we're getting to a realm here too where we need to start lumping tyone in you know if we talk just preseason right. projections the cubs have been out without their one and two starters they've been out their setup man and now they're going to be out their best offensive threat um that is no joke and so as much as they pocket wins at any scenario any situation just like they did monday uh i think it's big time i really do 100 uh, alexander canario was called up from triple a canario and mike talkman will likely platoon and right. canario could also be part of the dh rotation and or slide over to left or center if happer bellinger is at the dh as part of the rotation that day uh, lineup with Suzuki out will obviously look different. And the number two spot. I'd like it to not be Swanson. Thank you. With Dansby Swanson, less than ideal as it was uh, Monday night. So I do wonder if we'll see Canario, you know, is, uh, I don't know if highly publicized is the right phrase, but, uh, you know, Canario was here last year and uh, the manager then didn't play him. And there's no yeah. other way to put that. Uh, what happens now? We'll see. There is a lefty on the bump on Tuesday. We'll preview that later in the show. So he'll play. Um, he'll play. Yeah, this is a, a big absence. Lineup's different. Um, you know, for not for old time's sake, but just because I think, especially given recent at bats, um, you know, maybe maybe Horner is in there uh, if he doesn't lead off uh, Tuesday, which he probably will. But maybe Wednesday against the righty, he goes up to second. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, before we before we just we we get yeah. to the the the, the, the game, game today, yeah. and I have a lot of stuff on this game on 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 Council and Brown. I just wanted to say one final thing. Yes, it's very rare, especially in today's game, to have a combination of power, an eye, you know, yeah. good eye, and and to be able to hit for average. Right. And, and Saya has those three things, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give up on him at all. Um, but I just sure. I, I I I look at him like I looked at Hap a couple years ago when I I just have very high expectations for this guy, and I hope he could come back and and carry the team um, when he's when he's healthy again. Cubs with a thrilling win Monday. Let's break it all down. Next. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your car alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one car, you always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back with eBay motors. You're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your car alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers. 
This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. The experience of searching for and then buying tickets on Game Time is simple. Matt and I went last Saturday. It was awesome. We we got hooked up, and it was uh, a really good time watching the Cubs play the Dodgers. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account or redeem code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Cubs play the Diamondbacks at 8.40 p.m. Central Tuesday. You can hear every pitch of the Cubs hometown broadcast on Sirius XM by searching Cubs on the SXM app. And the Cubs will be going for a series win Tuesday night. Kyle Hendricks against Tommy Henry. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Ben Brown was magnificent, retired 13 in a row at one point. Two walks allowed in the bottom of the second was his only blemish as one of them eventually came around to score. Finished with one run on one hit in six innings, walked two, and struck out four. Michael Bush homered for a fifth straight game. He's now one of five Cubs to homer in five straight. And the Cubs took the lead for good in the top of the 11th. Uh, no, it was top of the 12th, excuse me. Uh, no, top of the 11th. It, it was an 11 inning ball game. Top of the 11th, I'm sorry. Top yeah. of the 11th, thanks to a Nico Horner two-strike single with the bases loaded and nobody out. The Cubs didn't score any more runs, but Keegan Thompson, uh, what a story this could be. He pitched both the 10 and the 11th scoreless uh, to close this one down. Sam, where, where would you like to start? I don't because know. Because this game was uh, hammered. I don't know. Um, I'd like to start, I think, with – the manager stuff. Well, first I'd like to yeah. start by saying, I, first I want to say Ben Brown, I tweeted out that he didn't look good early in the game because the thir- first two innings he struggled and then three for, through six was the best he's looked. Um, so credit to him. Crazy. I want to start with the manager thing because tonight, one of the, and, and then it's, it's going to be very positive because this is a great win. But one thing that I, you know, w- w- when we look back at our shows last year and we reflect on our season last year, you know, the big thing I got from our shows was I, I was really on David Ross. I just was. And I would say probably 95% of it was warranted. Some of it was hindsight. Some of it was emotional. This was one of those games that proves sometimes proves to you it doesn't matter. And it just comes down to players playing and, and some luck. Because David Ross didn't manage as bad of a game as Craig Council did tonight in that, that horrible nightmare game, that Saturday night, that 13-inning game. And the Cubs just couldn't find a way to win. I could not believe that they walked Ketel Marte to get to, to get to Corbin Carroll. I understand left on left, but remember, Drew Smiley's not great left on left. Corbin Carroll actually has a higher average left on left. And Corbin Carroll, I don't care what his numbers say. He's a he's not a star, in my opinion. He's a young superstar. I don't wow. want him, I don't want him anywhere near the plate right, right. in a moment like that. Then you have the whole takes out. Morrell in a tie game late. If you're going to start him in the game's tied, he, he can't play when the game's tied. And, and then it rolls over to Madrigal. You you have to hit and run when Madrigal's up in the account or he's going to ground into a double play. And that was it. And so I just wanted to just say that to be fair to David Ross. I thought Council managed a bad game. He got away with it. Uh, this just shows you sometimes baseball's crazy. Look at the Marlins last year. They won every one run game there was. Now this year they're three and 12. It's just, it's a very random it's a crazy game. crazy sport. And, and honestly, today, the Cubs were just on the right side of a crazy game. Now, don't get me wrong. The Diamondbacks made some mistakes. Marte, uh, Marte not tagging up, man, on third one out there on a 50-50 play was odd. It's simple odds. 50-50 versus what? The 30% chance that uh, Guriel gets it. a hit. Have to apply the pressure there. Uh, but I want to say. What about I, Mastro for Amaya? Was that on my, well, that was on my notepad. Yeah, I'd like to see them use Mastro more as a pinch runner right now um, versus a hitter. But I think for me now, getting to the positive side, Ben Brown, you know, just outstanding. I mean, really just outstanding. That's not an easy lineup to navigate around, and they don't they don't strike out a lot at all. Ultimately, he's the lead story. 
and I think this, I, and I think the MVP. He's the lead story, but I think the MVP of the game is Keegan Thompson. Um, it really is. Yeah, and and and, and you, you him and Horner. One, you were the one kind of like, hey, look out here for for Thompson. I didn't buy it. Um, I really didn't. His velocity is way up from where it was oh in my AAA. Gosh. I double checked this uh, about an hour ago, yeah. and he was sitting eighty nine ninety last week. Yeah, last week topped out at ninety one. And now he's 94. I believe he hit 95 a few times. <laughs> so that's a story. Matt, he had. What's he with that? He kept the ghost runner at second base two yeah. consecutive innings. And I'll wrap up with this and then toss it to you. He's great, man. It is now. Can 12, he be the Cubs closer? It is now 12 23 in the morning. That's Central crazy, time. man. 12 24. I, I don't care if these games go to one. 2, 3 a.m. I got to be up tomorrow at 6.45 like most of the world. Do you really? Yeah, It doesn't matter what happens. Whatever we got to do to win baseball games because that's what it's about. It's not about Lolly having fun and talking about this and beer cups and snakes and, and, and going crazy in the bleachers. It's just about winning baseball games and putting up central banners, ultimately playoff banners. And today was another millisecond close to that. If they got to go to three in the morning tomorrow to win, we'll do that, although we won't be live tomorrow night. Right. This is – uh Late recordings. I don't care if this game here. goes till 6 a.m. I'll pull an all-nighter as long as it's a W. W's. It's not cup snakes. It's not what it's about. It's about winning. I was feeling pretty discouraged in the after the top of the 10th. Nick Madrigal, who, by the uh, way, hit for the first time. I do want to put this out there. I don't have time for this. He hit for the first time in five days and the second time in nine days. Uh, grounded into a double play. By the way, uh, the bridge between Brown and Smiley was Luke Little. He looked good in the seventh. Yeah. Um, Great bullpen game. Great. I wasn't disturbed by Smiley's outing, and I understand. People got to get off of Smiley. What you're saying about the the Carroll thing. Uh, Hector Neris appeared in this game, Sam. Uh, Wait, Uh, I forgot to mention that. Please. That was crazy. And he yesterday. got out of that inning. Now, Jan Gomes did throw out a would-be base stealer because Tori Lovello made a, a, a stupid, idiotic challenge the yeah. previous half inning when Nico Horner <laughs> right. scored yeah. from second on a wild pitch. It, it wasn't a fine managed game uh, either side. But uh, Hector Neris <laughs> threw 20-something pitches. Usually that 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 brother would be in his in the gym <laughs> shoes. And uh, – I need a – but 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 he wasn't. I'm assuming Alzelay was, but uh, that seems pretty obvious. But um, Keegan Thompson, tenth and eleventh. Wow, what a what a masterful job there, Nico Horner. Uh, could this be the game where he turns a corner? I think so. I think this is something to build on for him. Uh, went up and just got a pitch, especially there in the eleventh. Just a crazy line drive single and. Uh, for as for as rough as the day started out, um, what a way to finish! As the Cubs are are now uh, on a win streak again, three in a row. And I think the biggest thing, and you hinted at it early, not only are you down Seon, Steele, and Merriweather, but you're also essentially down your whole offense right now. Nobody's hitting besides Michael Bush, and and I guess technically oh, Garrett Cooper. Man, Let me just read you. You've just won three straight games. Can I read you the batting offense average? Offense is ice cold, man. Hap two thirty four, Swanson two twenty four, Bellinger one eighty, Morel two twenty two, <laughs> and you're winning games. That because because look, we know we have data from last year. These guys, yeah. these guys go up and down. They're probably going to have a game here this week where they put up a ten spot and break out of it. Well, so probably the, Thursday or Friday. These little games that you find a way to win, they go such a long way towards. You know, I we always talk about it. Minimize the cold streaks, maximize the hot ones. This yeah. is you're you're actually going through a funk as a team right now, and you've won Big your time. last three games. Meanwhile, nobody knows. Neris just popped out of nowhere. When I saw him, I thought I fell asleep. Well, I thought it was kind of like a joke. <laughs> uh, he threw 20 you said games. it. I think we might get him, be getting pranked. This was these last two games for for mid April have been overly wild. And, and guess what? He looked better, by the way, Neris. Yeah, well, if, I mean, could he? It's hard to look worse than he did Sunday, but yeah, no, he yeah. did look. He looked much better, and you know, we'll see, man. I, it's starting to get late, so right. 
starting to get. You mean in, in terms of time? Yeah, yeah. I'm well, yeah, it's like, coming up on twelve thirty. I feel like I'm starting to repeat myself. Bush, sure. I, I, Barry Bush hit another homer. Yo, and and could Cody Bellinger please watch Michael Bush tape? <laughs> Please, 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 please. I like what I saw from Bellinger today. I'm intrigued going into tomorrow. Okay, good. Well, do you Tuesday, think they, do Kyle you think Hendricks they, against yeah. Tommy Henry. Do you think they sit Bush versus the lefty tomorrow? No. Henry is the first lefty starter the Cubs are facing since Kyle Freeland exactly two weeks ago, Sam. Crazy. Um, so it's been a long time. And uh, series win is on the table. And what's the goal? <laughs> okay, language alert. What's Kyle Hendricks's goal on Tuesday? A quality start. Okay, so quality start. We're still going by the baseball yeah, card, six, baseball yeah. reference definition. Six innings, three earned or less. Six innings, three earned or less. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll keep tabs on that as the Cubs go for a series win, just like that in Arizona on Tuesday. Again, we will not be live uh, with post game coverage. We'll. Uh, play the hits and and get out a episode Wednesday morning per usual. Uh, maybe some storylines so far for the Cubs. Who really needs to step up in Suzuki's absence uh, and things like that. All right, let's wrap it up with uh, some Ken Holtzman tribute coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Are you struggling to close deals? LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive higher revenue and increase sales performance. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today by going to linkedin.com slash locked on to get started. We close out a show here on a early Tuesday morning <laughs> live and everywhere else on demand on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Sirius XM, and everywhere you get your podcast. Considered one of the best left-handed pitchers in Cubs history, Ken Holtzman died on Monday. Uh, Cubs with a few nice tributes, including one on Marquee during the broadcast Monday. Holtzman pitched two no-hitters. With the Cubs, my dad uh, pointed me towards that earlier Monday, August 1969, June 1971. 71. Only uh, One of only three pitchers in Cubs history with multiple no-hitters. Holtzman, and who are the other two? Quick Trivia Tuesday. Arietta. Jake Arietta. Um, I, I don't have time for anything like Larry this, right? Corcoran. Yeah. So all um, told nine season with the Cubs as part of a 15 year MLB career. Let's pour one out for Ken Holtzman. Yeah. And I'd like to just say one more quick thing on Ken Holtzman. You know, this is yes. a cub. Sh this is a cub show, but if, if my memory and baseball reference stuff serves me correctly, I believe in 1971, he was traded to the A's. Yeah. Um, he was an A for a while for Rick Muddy. He, three straight World Series champions. He was a part of those teams. And if I, I'm almost positive, I should have just looked it up while you were reading, but I think his ERA in the playoffs during those three years for the A's was under two. Yeah, it was in the ones, yeah. yeah three, he was a stud pitcher. Uh, yeah, so, 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 you know, rest in peace. All right, we'll be back Wednesday morning, normal time. Our three episode will titles. drop Wednesday morning. Cubs win. Titles. Say is out, but the Cubs win, and uh, they continue to be in survival mode. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs. Go Cubs.